All right guys, so in this video, we're gonna go over catalog settings. Now, unlike general preferences, catalog settings are actually specific to each and every catalog that we work in within Lightroom. General preferences apply to everything within Lightroom. Catalog settings are each catalog only. Now to get there, we can go two different ways. We can go to the edit menu right here and pull down to catalog settings, or just use the shortcuts, which I prefer, which is just control, alt, comma, or command, option, comma on a Mac. All right, so now that we're here, we're gonna pop over to the general tab where we're gonna start. And number one, we're gonna go to this backup option and I'm gonna set my backup to never. But basically, let me tell you what this is first. Uh, now, if you guys, most of you should already be really familiar with Lightroom, you guys already did the Lightroom 4 DVD. And you know that this backup option is only for the catalog only, not the images. Now, because our workflow is so quick, we're getting catalogs in and out uh, within a day and all of our catalogs are redundantly backed up we don't need Lightroom to do any backing up for us and I don't wanna get these reminders. So I'm gonna set this to never, that way I don't get these reminders, it's not annoying or anything like that. But the default is once a week and it's when exiting Lightroom. And it is a good idea to make sure that you do have a back of your catalog because sometimes you might screw up a catalog or maybe the catalog goes corrupt when you're transferring between drive to drive. And so having a backup of that somewhere is a good idea to have. All right, so that's it for the general tab. Let's go on to the file handling tab. Now here we have the preview cache, and this isn't the one-to-one -one preview cache. Well, it's talking about kind of a few different things. Number one, we have the standard preview size, and this is not the one-to-one -one previews. This is the standard previews. Standard previews is what you're seeing when you're within the library module, going from image to image. Now, a lot of people say, well, hey, I don't understand why, but for some reason, my standard previews within the library module look very, uh, just not very sharp. Uh, they're kind of a little bit blurry. The reason why is because your preview size and your quality is set too low. On a large screen, if you have, if you're running at say 1980 by, uh, or 1920 by 1080 resolution, or 1920 by 1200, or you're going even higher on our production monitors, we run at like 2440 by 1400. On these monitors, these are high resolution monitors, and you need to keep a very high quality in your standard preview size. So I leave it on 2048 pixels and on high preview quality. That way when you see those previews inside of the library module, they're gonna be very sharp and they're very crisp and, and they're sized appropriately based on your monitor resolution. Now the caveat to this is that if you're running on a slower machine, then obviously it's gonna take a longer time to generate higher quality standard size previews. Uh, so I would only recommend this if you're, if you're running on a, a pretty up-to-date machine, a good amount of RAM, a great you know, fast processor and everything like that. Um, otherwise, if you're running like say on a laptop that has a smaller screen, you, it's really not going to matter for you anyway because let's say your screen resolution is uh, 1280 by 1024. Well, you're not even going to see 2048 pixels on your screen, so you don't need to have a, uh, a preview size set that high. You can use a preview size of 1024 or 1440, and that'll be just as sufficient for your screen since you're running on a smaller screen size. So for slower machines keep your and, and for smaller monitors, keep your preview size and your preview quality a little bit lower. For faster machines and for larger monitors, you wanna keep it as high as possible. All right, now the next option we have is this automatically discard one-to-one -one previews. We wanna set this to after one week. Uh, 30 days is a little bit too long to have those one-to-one -one previews in our, our catalog or in our cache folder, just because um, you know we get our jobs in and out within one to two days. So we wanna make sure that they're gone within a week from the preview cache if they haven't already been replaced by something else. Okay, so one week is sufficient for us. Again, this depends on your workflow. If you're getting things in and out in a day, then after one day is totally fine as well. I wouldn't select never though, because it will just leave these you know, preview cache items in there uh, just forever, even if you're using or you're not using Lightroom. So if you're not using Lightroom and you go say a month without using it, at least it'll open up space by clearing up the preview cache if you set it to one of these other options. All right, with import sequence, we wanna leave it as default. It's fine right there. Let's go on to the metadata tab. Now for metadata tab, we do want to have a few of these options selected. Number one, offer suggestions from recently entered values. This is great from a workflow standpoint because as you're typing things in, it's going to auto fill based on what you're typing in and what previously has been entered. So it'll save a little bit of time there. Also, we want to deselect uh, this include develop settings inside of JPEG, TIFF, and PSD files. Reason being is that you know when we're delivering these images to clients, we're delivering them JPEGs. I don't want develop settings and metadata and all that stuff included within those JPEG files. I just want the basics included, copyright data, you know, that's it. 
Uh, so I don't want all that stuff being included. Next, this is an absolute must. Guys, if you want to have a, a much quicker workflow, turn off automatically write changes into XMP. Now, from our Lightroom 4, uh, 4 DVD, you guys should know that XMP files are only used when you're editing these images within third-party applications that are not Photoshop or Lightroom, basically. They're not Adobe applications. So what's basically happening is when you edit an image with this automatically rate changes in XMP selected, you're going to make adjustments to the sliders. It's going to save that setting in the catalog, in the Lightroom catalog, and then it's going to save it again in another XMP file. So it's making every single change, it's writing it twice to your hard drive. Now, of course, writing it twice is going to slow things down by that exact amount. So turn this off when you don't need XMPs, and I would guarantee that probably 99% of you have no use for XMP files. Once again, the use for XMP files is like, like for example, um, editing companies like, uh, you know, um, what is it? What those? There's a ton of photo editing companies that you give them your images and they'll basically color correct them for you. A lot of times when they give them back to you, because not everybody uses Lightroom, they give them back to you with just the, uh, the XMP files. And so you just drop the XMP files next to the images, you load it up back into Lightroom, and then you have all of the developed settings stored in those XMP files next to each image. That's why they're called sidecar files, XMP sidecar files. So that's basically how they would transfer, you know, these develop settings from image to image. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, from computer to computer or from user to user. But if you have, say, two computers that are using Lightroom or you and your friend are using Lightroom, rather than transferring XMP files, you just give them your Lightroom catalog. So you take all these images, you give them the catalog file, and you can pass the catalog file back and forth, and it works the exact same way. So for the majority of you, there's no purpose in having these XMP files separate from a catalog file. It's just going to slow down Lightroom. Another case where you might want this is if you're editing in, say, another third-party application that uses uh, XMP files for develop settings. Like, say, some third-party some third party applications can't read Lightroom's catalog file. Uh, so you would write into XMP so that when you take those images into that application, then it can read the develop settings. But Photoshop does that for you and it takes it directly from the catalog file. So again, when you're pulling things directly from Lightroom into Photoshop, there's no need for XMPs. All right, guys, so that's the main thing there. So automatically write change the XMP, have it deselected, uh, and that's gonna greatly speed up Lightroom. Now the next two options right here, I'm gonna turn off enable reverse geocoding of GPS coordinates and the reverse geocoding uh, suggestions whenever the fields are empty. Reason being is that I don't use geocoding. So once again, if I can deselect things that you know I don't need, then again, it's gonna improve overall performance. But we're gonna actually disable the entire map module in a little bit uh, when we show you guys how to hack Lightroom to kind of only show the models that you use. So it's not really a big deal either way. But if there's something that you definitely don't use, just turn the setting off. Now, one thing I would not recommend selecting is this EXIF write data or time change or date or time changes into proprietary raw files. What this is, is occasionally we're going to basically have camera sync issues um, where a camera was not properly synced to another camera and we're going to modify that within Lightroom. Now, if you have this setting basically selected, when you make that change, it's going to write the change into the raw file and it's going to basically remove the original date and time on that image. Typically, that's not really going to be ever a big deal, but if we want to ever want to refer back to the original time, then we don't want to basically replace that, that timestamp. All right, guys, so that's it as far as the catalog settings go. Let's uh, hit OK now to accept our changes, and let's go on to the next video.